Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in today's video, I have a new machine in the shop. This is the WizMaker L1 featuring a 36 watt laser module. I'm going to be doing the unboxing, the assembly of the machine and doing the really simple and easy connection of Lightburn software up to the machine. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss a minute of this video. Welcome back and thanks for joining me for yet another video. Before I start with the unboxing and the setup of the WizMaker L1, I'm going to share that this is a sponsored video. With that covered, I'm ready to do the unboxing. The first thing that I'm greeted by is this box with all of the components nicely packaged into each individual precision compartment, making sure that none of the parts are scratched or damaged during shipping. On the very top is a user guide on how to set up and use the machine using software such as laser gerbil or light burn software. There's also a laser engraving instruction manual, which is what will be used to assemble the machine and do basic maintenance. While I remove the rest of the contents of the box, I'm going to talk a little bit about the company WizMaker. This, of course, is the 36 watt laser module edition of it, but they also have other variations of this in different power levels that are suited for just about any budget level. As I pull all of these pieces out, we'll see that I've got this nice gray color for the framework. This is also available in something like a maroon red color. All the components are out of the box here. I can place this now off to the side. And what's really neat about this machine is most of the components come partially pre-assembled. It's going to make the final assembly a breeze and it should only take about 10 to 15 minutes. Before I start assembling everything, I wanna show you a close up of just a couple key components. Before I dive into just a couple details on this laser machine kit, I do wanna draw our attention to the frame members. All the frame members on this machine are solid aluminum. They're very thick and they're very large. This is going to make for a very stable laser platform. The first thing that already catches my eye is this front frame beam that houses the main controller board. Everything is nice and neatly laid out and Really what I wanna take a look at is the wiring harness. This definitely has ample length on it. And when I look at all the connector ends, anytime there's two connectors that are near the same area, the connectors are a completely different size, making it foolproof to mix up the connections. Here I've got one of the side rails and we're gonna see that the belt that runs all the way down, this is already pre-tensioned further reducing the required assembly time. When I move this piece back and forth, this is what's going to help move the laser head back and forth. This is nice, smooth, and silky. And by the way, the end caps here that hold the ends of the belts, these are solid cast aluminum pieces. The opposite side of that rail I just took a look at, of course, this one has the motor on it and it also has a homing limit switch on it. And it's got the same rail setup and the same pre-tension belt. Now, this motor will connect up to the other rail using this solid metal drive shaft. Next, I have the frame member that's going to hold on to the laser module. When I look at the backside, I see that I've got a very large motor for speed and precision with plenty of power. Again, it gets the same treatment as the side rails with a pre-tension belt. I'll also see that there's this large hand knob here and that is going to be used for the height adjustment of the laser module. On the top, there's also an access port for any maintenance adjustments on the shuttle that moves back and forth. And here's what's definitely the star of the show. This is the WizMaker L1 laser module. Now this is a 36 watt laser module and it already has an air assist nozzle already installed 
and that air tube plugs conveniently into the top of the unit. Next, I've got an accessories and parts bag here. I've got a couple of Allen wrenches and a nice professional level quality wrench. And I call these professional level because they're not stamped sheet metal. The Allen wrenches are very nice and in fact, I'll be using them throughout the assembly of the kit here. There's a couple zip ties to tidy things up and a couple sample pieces of acrylic for sample projects. There's a USB card reader and in the end of this card reader is an SD card. Later on in the video, we're gonna check out what's on here. I recommend before starting the assembly of the machine to install this on your computer and copy any of the files over. That way you've got a duplicate on your PC or your Mac that will be right next to the machine. Once I have those copied over, this SD card will be installed in the top of the machine. There's also a couple of wood blanks and a clear glossy acrylic for, again, sample projects. And then here's the main thing I'm really interested for the assembly portion of this video is the, all the fasteners that are required for putting the machine together. And we're going to see that each bag is labeled as step one, step two, and some spare parts. There's also a number of pieces here to help with cable management. There's also a lens cleaning cloth. And by the way, a nice attention to detail by Wizmaker is all three of these parts bags were in order in this larger bag. And the last couple of parts included with the kit are this nice beefy power supply. And this is a quality power supply. It does have some weight to it. And that's one of the things that I look for in a quality kit. And here's the power cable that goes up to that power supply a cleaning brush to remove any debris that's on your project material, a pair of safety glasses, and a USB cable for connecting the machine up to the computer. And of course, we already took a look at the manuals at the beginning of the unboxing. I'm now ready to start the assembly on the machine. Off camera, I'm going to familiarize myself with how the machine is assembled before I start bolting everything together. I always like to start out with a general idea of how all the pieces and parts go together before I actually start. I find that extra minute or two really makes the assembly go a lot smoother and most of all, an enjoyable experience. The couple of minutes that I spent off camera familiarizing myself with the manual to assemble the machine really paid off. Everything makes sense before I even pick up the first bag of fasteners or the first tool to put everything together. We'll also see that I spent an extra minute to clear off all the parts that are not needed for this first part of the assembly. Doing these two things really helps create a fun and enjoyable time putting together this laser machine. Before I get started into a time-lapse assembly of this machine, I just wanna draw our attention to this back frame beam. And it can go on either way, except that on the very bottom, there's two mounting holes in there, and that's going to be for these feet. With that, I'm now ready to start the assembly. Assembly was a breeze. It took me only 20 minutes and that's while I am doing a recording for this YouTube video and fumbling around with all of the different cameras around the shop. So I'd expect it would take you even less time. I liked everything that I saw during the assembly process. I was able to use the tools that are included with the kit. Again, very good tools. The only thing that I noted while assembling was this last cable that goes up to the laser module. That connection goes directly into the laser module with no strain relief on the wire. And this is a concern for me as, as this laser head shuttles back and forth without any strain relief, 
all of that cable flex will be focused at the connection at the back of the laser module. And this over time will result in wires breaking. So what I did is I removed the four screws off the top of the grill on this cooling fan and I put a zip tie that's included with the kit through that grill so that I can secure this cable to the top of the laser module providing strain relief for the connector in the back. Now the laser module is able to move back and forth and this entire length of this cable is allowed to flex without any of that focusing flex going into that connector. Next, I'm going to jump into my computer and take a look at any of the files on the included SD card with the WizMaker L1. After that, I'm going to set up and connect the machine using Lightburn software. Here's all the contents of the SD card that is included with the WizMaker machine. This top folder here contains all the parameters for cutting or engraving, and it has the parameters for 5 watt, 10 watt, and 30 watt machines in both the free laser dribble software or the paid Lightburn software. The next folder is software and drivers for connecting the machine up to the computer, whether you're using a Linux computer operating system, a Mac OS, or like myself, Windows. When I go in here and I click again, here are the required driver files to correctly use the USB cable between the computer and the machine. There's also an included sample image of an eagle. That's pretty neat. We'll take a look at that maybe in a future video. And the last file here, this is going to be for those of us who are going to be using Lightburn software. This file contains all of the parameters so that Lightburn software properly connects to the WizMaker L1 machine. I'm gonna take all these files and copy these over to my computer. That way I don't have to remove the SD card from the machine if I wanna reference any of these in the future. With the files copied over, I can eject this card reader and I'm going to remove the small SD card that's at the very top and I'm going to install this little card in the top of the laser machine. Of course, making sure that power is still off on the laser machine. I'll click that into place. I'll connect the USB cable between the laser machine and the computer and it'll be ready to power on. Before I power the laser machine on, I'm going to place this aluminum sheet underneath the laser machine. That way if I accidentally turn the laser beam on before I'm ready, I don't mark up my nice table. If you don't have one of these nice sheets, you can definitely use a sheet of aluminum foil. I recommend using the heavy duty version and just take out a long length of that, fold it over, making sure that the dull side of that aluminum foil is facing up towards the laser module. I'm now ready to power the machine on. Inside Lightburn software, I'm going to navigate to devices. I'll click on that. I'm going to click on import and I'm going to find where I copied all the files from that SD card. Here's the location on my computer where I saved all the files from the SD card. I'm, and I'm looking for this whizmaker.lbdev. I'll click on that once and I'll click open and I'm all set and that shows up down here at the bottom and it has all the configuration already in Lightburn. I only need to click OK. Now I can come back over to the main menu and I'll pull down my machine menu. I'll go all the way to the bottom here to WizMaker and we'll see that it is connected. Now for the moment of truth, I'm going to hit the home button here and we'll see if I have the machine properly homes in this front corner. Wow, look at that. I've already got movement on the machine and it's as easy as that, installing Lightburn software, using that included configuration file to import that into the device setup and I'm ready to go. Before I wrap things up here, I have one small correction. Earlier in the video during the unboxing, I had this piece of acrylic 
I thought this was just a practice piece of acrylic, but after going through the manual for the machine a little bit closer, I found out that this is actually the focusing gauge for the laser. This is simply placed on top of your work material and the laser is just set down on top of that gauge. The gauge is removed and now the laser is in perfect focus. I'm going to label my gauge and keep it close by on my laser machine. I've got some initial thoughts on the machine that I'd like to share with you. During the assembly process, there's actually not that many bolts that go together that really need to hold this together. There's enough to hold it securely, but there's not all these different size bolts. I really like the simplicity and how quickly the machine goes together. The way the machine goes together with these sturdy cast aluminum blocks in the corner is during assembly, this frame self squares. So there's no reason to take a tape measure from corner to corner to make sure that everything is just right. And as we just saw, connecting the computer using the Lightburn software and the included configuration file made this connection between computer and machine a breeze. It really is just that quick. Overall, I'm really impressed with just how stout and strong this frame is. That's something that I really look for on a laser machine. It's got some weight to it also. And this is important when you're doing high speed engraving and cutting that the machine isn't going to walk around on the table surface. Thanks for watching. And you know, this wouldn't be a YouTube video if I didn't say, please like this video, subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. It helps draw more attention to this video to connect content like this with great viewers like you. I'm looking forward to future videos. We'll I'll be doing a couple mini projects on here and cutting through some sample materials. Stay tuned for future videos on that. Until next time, learn, create, and share.